Welcome back to another episode of Retro Axis. On this episode, I'll be discussing some of the likes and dislikes of the Atari VCS. Let's get started. All right, so in this episode, I'll be talking more about my time spent with the Atari VCS and what I've learned to like and dislike about the Atari VCS. So again, this is an Atari VCS 800. Uh, this particular unit is the one that ships from the factory with eight gigs of memory. I've upgraded it to 32 and also added an M2 drive. So this would be considered, I guess, a fully loaded uh, unit. Uh, just for what it's worth, uh, one of the things I really like is the set-top box form factor. Um, you know, um, it's nice and, and thin and streamlined, and there's quite a bit packed into this. You know, it's got USB 3 ports, which I think is great. The HDMI supports 4K, an Ethernet port included, as well as Wi-Fi, um, and the external power supply keeps it uh, nice and tidy. So I really appreciate the size of this particular machine. Also having USB ports on the front uh, makes it easy to access, either for plugging in uh, wired controllers or USB storage devices or what have you. I've even tested some uh, USB hubs and they work perfectly fine so you can expand this uh, and it's a really good form factor and I like the set top box size. Uh, other things I like, let's talk controllers for just a minute. So this is the classic controller um, and again I talked about this in a previous episode but I do like the combined form factor of the paddle controller with the traditional joystick and I think it's really great. Uh, you know it does have a little bit of a flimsy feeling as you're kind of cranking this thing around you kind of get a little concerned that you might break it but so far so good it's, it's been holding up pretty well to some of the tests and gaming that I've been doing uh, on this particular controller. Now on to the uh, the modern controller, uh, you know, this is an Xbox style controller and uh, it is relatively lightweight. It's comfortable to hold. It has an overall good feel. But one of the things I really dislike about this controller is the directional pad. So if you can see the D pad in each of the directions has a raised bump. Uh, and as you're playing and rubbing your thumb or your, you know, your finger along here, it starts to wear at, at the tip of your finger and starts to irritate and it's really obnoxious and I'll tell you I've compared it to other remotes like the um, this is the uh, Nintendo Switch Pro Controller this is the Xbox uh, One Controller this is a PS4 controller and this is a PC Logitech controller uh, and I'll tell you not one of these has any sort of raised uh, thing on the d-pad and so none of these aggravate your finger so I'm not really sure why they chose to use that particular design feature but it's really aggravating um, but apart from that again nice controller uh, it does work relatively well but for games where using a d-pad gets old really quickly so the Atari VCS operating system as we discovered before is based on a PERTIS and Atari did put a custom UI on top of it and I will say you know Linux user interfaces is always one of these things where um, over time there's been a lot of advances in them there there's KDE there's GNOME there's LXDE there's you know, window maker open box there's been tons of window managers over the years and it's always one of these things that's tricky and um, you know everyone has their sort of opinion about it but what I will say for a, a, a Linux machine that's trying to be a game console the user interface is actually pretty smooth it's well designed it's fast very much like the Roku in terms of the ability to navigate in, in squares and, and find what you're looking for. Getting to the settings is straightforward. One thing I do dislike, however, is if you have a USB keyboard or a keyboard plugged into your Atari, you cannot unlock the Atari uh, VCS OS from a keyboard, and I find that really frustrating. You have to actually go and pull up the virtual keyboard using the arrow keys on that keyboard and get to the numbers in order to input and unlock your VCS. So the fix for that, turn off the, the screen unlock with pin and that problem goes away, but still annoying. Other things that I like on the operating system, uh, again, going back to the fact that it's a PERTIS, uh, that uh, operating system is designed to use multiple partitions 
Uh, and the purpose of those is to have a upgrade path and a rollback or failback path in the event that something doesn't work. And that's a really great feature. And I think a lot of systems incorporate that. Really glad to see Atari using that design. And that's something that I really appreciate. It's not something most people would know about or care about, but if you're interested in understanding how things work under the covers, that's a good design practice. And I really like that. Uh, the upgradable design, uh, you know, the fact that Atari makes it so that you can add uh, memory or uh, an additional hard, hard disk, in this case an M2 SATA drive to be specific. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that's a really great idea in concept. However, where I really struggle is the fact they didn't provide an easy access panel for the memory. I think that could have been something very straightforward to put right here. And getting to the M2, the fact that it's you know along the side, you have to take the whole case apart to get it they should probably find a better way to give you the upgrades. And I think that is something I dislike. So another dislike, uh, why did they put a BIOS password on here? Um, I mean, my understanding from reading the Discord forums is that you know AMD has partnered with Atari on this and they're the ones developing the BIOS. So perhaps they've secured this because they don't want people tinkering with it for I don't know what reasons, but honestly, It'd be really nice to see what the BIOS options are. I think one of the biggest complaints that I have and dislikes is the video RAM is shared. Uh, and again, that could be an architecture design. There's probably a limit to how much VRAM you can add, but certainly having more than two gigs of VRAM would really be great. So, you know, the fact that the BIOS is locked down, that's kind of annoying. Another annoying thing is the fact that if you want to install a third party operating system, whether it be, you know, choose your Linux flavor of choice, that Linux flavor needs to support UEFI Secure Boot. Now, certainly there's ways to get around that, uh, but again, for the average person who's not necessarily Linux savvy, um, this is gonna be a limitation for them. They're not going to be able to just go download, you know, as an example, Batocera or Laka or, uh, you know, other, other custom distributions that support, you know, emulators. These are, these are custom distros. They do not boot simply because they don't have UEFI Secure Boot. So that is another limitation and annoyance of the Atari VCS. So the PC mode has opened a big door for me. You know, in the past I had a retro Pi based setup on this Raspberry Pi 3, and this was a great setup for a long time and it served me well for the majority of my emulation needs. Um, but what I will say is that I think the Atari VCS hardware uh, is definitely stronger than a, than a Raspberry Pi 3. I know the Raspberry Pi 4 is also out and there's some great capabilities there as well. But what I do like about PCs in general is there's a lot more options when it comes to Linux distributions. Uh, there's you know the difference between an ARM processor and, and an x86 or 64-bit processor um, from AMD. And I really like this setup uh, for my emulation. I've got it fully loaded with Lubuntu and I'm now gonna be replacing uh, this Raspberry Pi uh, with the VCS. So that's it for the likes and dislikes of the Atari VCS so far. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know what you think down in the comments. What are your likes and dislikes of the Atari VCS? I'd love to hear from you and know. Uh, there's a lot more still to explore on the VCS, uh, so we'll be covering some more in, the, in future videos. So be sure to subscribe, uh, listen for that notification bell, keep an eye on the channel, uh, and we'll see you next time on Retro Axis. <laughs>